Their historic surgery captured hearts around the world and the imagination of some of the world's greatest medical minds. Very clearly, these are two distinct personalities, two distinct human beings. That unusual situation of being in a, in a biological prison, essentially. Maria Teresa and Maria de Jesus are joined at the skull, the rarest of conjoined twins and the most difficult to separate. We could look at the venous system, which was the, the, clearly the problem. The venous, the veins were connected between the two twins, the arteries were not. We needed to separate them because such twins typically die between ages 5 and 10 when the brains expand and start squeezing on each other. So this operation was necessary to give them a chance at a happy, healthy life. Two prestigious hospitals turned the twins down, but doctors at UCLA felt there was enough medical evidence to support a successful separation. Neurosurgeon Dr. Jorge Lazarus assembled a team determined to free them. I felt, uh, based on the confidence uh, transmitted by uh, Isaac and John, that this could be possible, that this was possible that the surgical procedure was the, the ethical and the reasonable thing to do for those girls. Doctors took dozens of pictures, CAT scans, MRIs, angiograms, but they needed something more. A, a model which, which was built uh, of the um, heads them, themselves, showing essentially the point of uh, connection. So we finally hooked up with this firm, uh, BMI, Biomedical, uh, you know, Marlene Incorporated in, in Boston, and they sent us the models back. From images sent by the doctors, biomedical modeling created a perfect replica of the twins' heads. These models are very important to doctors. They, for the first time, allow doctors to have a physical, three-dimensional visualization of the patient's particular anatomy. It was a difficult, labor-intensive process to build the perfect models. But hearing the doctors and the hospital at UCLA had donated their efforts, biomedical modeling decided they would donate their efforts to save the twins, too. Once we have the data, we bring it onto our computers, and we see the familiar CAT scan images that our people are accustomed to seeing. And we take those, and we filter out the parts and tissues that we want to be included in the biomodel. And once they approve it, we go ahead and we decide to fabricate it. And that's done, the computer model is then sliced back down into the similar layers that you see in the beginning where you see the cross sections of bone. And that's put onto a machine that literally builds up the model layer by layer out of plastic. So the layers are extraordinarily thin, uh, as thin as a human hair. And they start off usually as a liquid. And that liquid is solidified by ultraviolet light. And once it's exposed to the ultraviolet light in those patterns, they solidify and they stack one on top and they glue to the layer below. And then when you're done, what you have is an actual 3D plastic model of the anatomy. To coordinate the effort, biomedical modeling worked with Dr. Bill Clarehue, one of the nation's most respected anaplastologists. Dr. Clarehue builds craniofacial implants and prosthetics for American veterans. He too volunteered after hours to help doctors with the twins. And I was able to view the information on the computer and show the surgeons exactly what they're going to get as far as a 3D model is going to end up looking like. We will remove the bone 60 percent up to here. At to UCLA, here. neurosurgeons yeah, and bone. plastic surgeons work out so their strategy together. In the beginning is right. this lady exposed and then... The critical factor yeah. in trying to separate them was the blood vessels. And the neurosurgeons had sort of worked that out and they thought that they could do that. Then it became a problem of getting everything covered. The twins were separated. They could not simply cut the skin right along where the twins' were, skulls were joined together. If they did that, they wouldn't have flaps of skin to cover the scalp afterwards and allow the twins to recover. Uh, these are the flaps that we've uh, designed based, um, based on this three-dimensional skull that's rendered from the, um, from the CAT scan. It's interesting because they're using um, it's like paper cutouts. They were using felt to mark their flaps. I mean, it looks like you're playing with paper dolls, but that's what they're doing because that's the best and easiest way to do this. They could practice on those skull models with their surgery prior to doing the surgery. I mean, how often can you hold the skull in one hand and operate on the skull in the other? It just, that's just the only way this can be done.
The cricket. The model of the head, please. I'd like to have the story that Throughout the 23-hour marathon surgery, the bio models were used from beginning to end. The first thing that will be done is this flap will be flipped toward, towards me. Right. These models that we did our flap designs on were made off of uh, CAT scans, CT scans. Uh, they're highly accurate. I mean, these models are very, very accurate. When the time came to make that first cut, we made it along the patterns that we had designed. And then we realized, I mean, th then it really sunk in on me was there's no turning back. And to have things turn out so well is very gratifying. To, um, to you know, to see the impact on the world, I mean, literally on the world. I would have never in my wildest dreams guessed that it would have this kind of impact. We are really delighted to have been part of this very heartwarming story. Joined at the head, they would never be able to walk or stand or even eat normally and were likely condemned to die between ages 5 and 10. Now they have a chance to be two happy, healthy individuals, and we look forward to hearing about their growing up and their successes in life. We're going to their weddings. <laughs> Within months, they are on their way back to Guatemala. Two healthy little girls, still on the mend, but with the promise of normal, healthy, and independent lives.